Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham and Jason Cole live. If you're live with us right now, you're live. If you're not, then you're only semi live. But at some point in time, this video actually occurred live on the RC Groups Hangout slash podcast. Jason, what's happening? Or did it? Yes, this could all be faked. This may not be a real newscast, and you and I may not be in our offices. This is true. You just never know. We could technology, be technology. Technology. Jason, do you think we went to the moon as a race? Oh, are we going to go there? Well, that's what I'm alluding to here is that this could all be the, the whole yeah, argument well, thing out could be fake. I'm going to say if that was fake, then I don't know anything. I can't mm -hmm. trust anything. I do. Really, we little... can trust like the government, right? Telling us like stuff. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I, I have a little government. problem with the flag the way it's like on a wire that's kind of weird maybe that's i haven't been an anti-gravity flying flag so i don't know how it should look I actually have watched theories and things on that and how they've proven that that is actual physics and real and the oh. shadows are proper and that stuff's all factually correct so i don't know hey i'll tell you so, this is there. This, i heard this um, I'm from Sherman, and I guess there were astronauts in Dallas. I heard this a long, long time ago, like in the 80s, but it was a astronaut who, I don't know if he went to the moon, but I know he was in space. He actually, he was telling a group of people, and I was there when he told this story. He said that they were looking out the window of the spacecraft, floating around in outer space, and they saw these light-looking things going through space, and they, it was coming towards the spacecraft. They had no idea what it was because... They'd never seen anything like this before in history, I guess. Yeah. And he said it came at the spacecraft, went through the spacecraft, exited the spacecraft. Everyone in the, the little three-man crew saw the whole thing, couldn't explain it, and then no one ever talked about it. NASA never <laughs> was like, oh, by the way, this happened. So oh, that was like yeah. a secret, secret story. Wow. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay, but enough with the moon and fake stories. Um, well, that was a true story. Um, Jason Cole has something. He did a thing. You know, I threatened to do it, but Jason actually did it, did it? Jason went out and bought the Timber X. He has it in his hot little hands. Yeah, I was I was at the indoor uh, thing on Tuesday flying my Tiny Hawk. And then the, the indoor is put on by the local hobby shop, Family Hobbies. And I heard him talking, and he was like, yeah, we got some Timber Xs in today. And I was like, what? And I was like, all right. And he's like, we got two left. And so they opened at 10 o'clock the following morning. I drove out there at 940. I left. It's about 20 minutes away. I got there at like one till 10, made sure I was the first guy in the door because I wanted to be able to grab a box off the shelf and, and pick it up. And it's here. Don't show, show him. <laughs> don't, don't show it to him. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's not here. It's a joke, guys. No, no, it's here. Is this, so is this real? Yeah, I'm going to get Jason to talk about the build. And did you actually get to go fly it today? I I may have had some stick time on it. All right. If, so if, if reality is reality, I don't know. <laughs> right. That might not be a real plan. But uh, we're going to talk about that later in the podcast. We're going to save that for last because it's the best. Oh, we lost one viewer. We show him a timber and then they leave. Come, Come on. back, man. Come back. He's going to wait till the end. Maybe he thought it was the whole Dude, moon thing. I apologize. Uh, my voice... My nose is like, I can feel it being nasally in my head and it's freaking me out, but I will do my best to, to talk well and not mean I'm so nasally to everybody. Yeah, you don't sound that different. <laughs> yeah. Jason, Jason, of course, uh, was in a, had a surgery. I was going to say it was in a bar fight. <laughs> had surgery on his nose and now he's concerned that he sounds nasally. And I actually, it sounds more like you have a slightly stuffy nose. Yeah. And it's not, I can breathe. <laughs> Perfectly well, but I it's I don't know why. I may have to go back to the doctor if it doesn't clear up in the next couple of days. Have you tried singing with your new nose? Singing in the rain. I don't know. You should try. You might now be a phenomenal singer. I'm, I might be. I can get on <coughs> with Kesha. Well, I'm you can tell. Her. You can tell we're serious today because I have the banner in the background. I got my hat on. The I'm old even, school hat. Watch this. <laughs> flying giants. Flying gigantes. I got it all. I even got the braids back. I don't know if anyone noticed. What's what's giant in Spanish? Well, gi uh, gigantic is gi uh, gigante. So, <laughs> hyant? I don't know. Uh, you know what I do know? I should go to the RCG videos. Holy cow, Lee. He's like negative four degrees where he's at. 
This it's, weather is terrible. The polar vortex is going to destroy the world. It, it was like 20 this morning when I checked. I it's heard some, be like, some places were like negative 50 wind chill. I mean, like, that's ridiculous. Did you see the picture of the, it was a, a wall outlet in a house, but it was so cold that it was freezing the screws. They had frosty <laughs> snow on them from the That's outside. some pretty piss poor insulation there, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez. So I actually did go out today. Jason, you'll be proud of me. This is uh, the portion where we talk about our lives. Um, I bought the, as you know, the ring doorbell for the front, like you have. Yeah. And, and uh, now that we have this cat who won't quit leaving the house, I have to let the dogs in and out to go pee. And that's a real pain in the butt. So we bought one for the back. So now I can watch them and talk to them uh, from the backyard. So you, a funny story. I was in bed this morning and the kids were out. They, they, the bus stops like right in front of my house. Like they stand in our sidewalk um, right in front of my driveway. And then I saw the motion alarm go off in my backyard and I was like, what? And so I looked and like kids were like running from each other through the backyard. And I don't know if you found this yet, but ring has a alarm you can trigger. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I pulled that up, put it on where I can hear what's happening, turn on the alarm. It goes, whoa, 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 and uh, then he gets off and they're like, you better get off of there. And they're like, oh, he has a camera. <laughs> I'm like, you're dang right. I got a camera, boys. Nice. Like, just best behave. Well, after the podcast, you're going to have to show me how to use that alarm. Yeah, I'll man. I also bought, I went on eBay uh, and bought a used ring uh, that they said worked fine for a very low price. And I'm going to stick that in the garage for the truck. So there I can also monitor my truck. Hey, have eyes on. All right, everybody, it's time to go to the news of RC Groups. I'm happy to report, by the way, that RC Groups has not had an error 500 outage. I'm not even going to jinx it by saying how long it's been, but long enough that I got an email today from a user who said, what's wrong with the site? I haven't had an error 500 in so long. <laughs> oh, my goodness. For reals. Wow. And then he said, I think that this guy is somebody who he's not. And then I'm like, you should talk to Jason Cole about that. <laughs> but, um, and site suggestions complaints. We need we need your guitar and you do a little like a little ditty for like different sections. So when it's time for the news, you're like, but well, I almost today I was thinking I should get some pre-made music up so I could do the at least the podcast intro and outro. There you go. There you go. Right, right, right. So we do have a lot of news, and I know that because this morning I was doing a compilation of the recent features since um, it's been I was doing a two-week compilation of features, and this is something that I submit occasionally to people who care. And uh, I know that you're people that care. So let me get the machine going and activated and make sure that I'm not showing my social security number. No, 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 good. Okay. And I'm going to hit the share and present to everybody. And there we go. We're live on rcgroups.com. You're looking at the website right now as if you were actually there. So Don't first of all, I, I see a thing right here, this ad right here. Ugly is beautiful. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Pusada. Oh, wait. I'm clicking on the wrong thing there. I'm going to go straight to their site for this. So I will. I almost posted this in the thread that, that we have on the site. This, uh, an ugly stick was the second airplane I ever built. And this dude. Yeah, is 100, I think everybody's had an ugly stick at one point or time in their life, right? You know what it's they like don't do? must have kind of airplane. They don't fly great. They do fly great. They fly good. They but fly like sport planes, yeah, like they're yeah. designed. They're highly coupled, but there's yeah, very... you can't knife it. Yeah, you're not gonna knife edge very well. Yeah, but it's uh, do they have any more here? No, you know what? You powered gonna... driving. Hey, be careful out there, buddy. I'm gonna go to my story, or was it? Yeah, it's my story. Now I gotta say, I do like the blue. I don't know what that's gonna look like in the sky, but I do like the blue. And uh, Ian designed that. Because somebody said, first thing he's going to do is recover it. Ian said he died a little bit inside uh, when they said <laughs> that. We'll go yeah, to the... Please, Mom. Chung, 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 chung. You know, Hobby King always does good videos, I gotta say. 
So, of course, it's in slow motion because we're looking at it this way, but it's a stick, and it's not a very big stick. It's kind of a uh, medium-sized uh, wingspan, which is good. Hey, that's him. That's the guy who designed the, uh, the trim scheme. What's up, Ian? All airfields look the same. I like the tail. <laughs> it's like the yeah. same design for workbenches. So it doesn't come with a motor. In fact, I don't know what it does come with. Features... Broad flight envelope, large battery compartment, strong yet light, high quality covering, uh, full floor channel control, elevator. I bet uh, it's a uh, unit that you have to get your own components going in. And how did that get in there? How did it put that? that in? Oh, it's probably a user's. You're looking through all the attachments in the thread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Anyway, that is happening. It just got released yesterday, as a matter of fact. So that's big news. Um, I'm going to go back to the all RC button. Jason, do you want to talk about this at all? The USB yeah, charger? I'm pretty excited about this thing. So uh, go to me real quick. So I've got my radio right here. Gotcha. And to charge the batteries, it uses 18500. So to charge the batteries, if you can see, you have to twist this knob, and then this thing comes off, and then your battery is in there. I hate those batteries. So you have to pull this battery out, stick it in like a flashlight kind of style charger, mm -hmm. stick this back in, put the cap back on and rotate it. So people are worried about these things becoming loose or wearing out the contacts over time. It's kind of a general pain in the butt. And there's this nice fancy uh, USB port right here. And you're like, well, why can't I just plug that in and charge it like I do everything else these days? And they just didn't include that in the radios. But so this board, now you can go back to that website. This is a third party modification. It's a charging board that and some wires and an LED light. And you have to do some soldering and take your radio apart and do all this. But once you install this thing, um, you then get a status light in the charger button or the uh, power button on the radio. So when you plug it in and it's charging, a uh, red light comes on. When it's done charging, the red light goes out. It is actually balanced charging the batteries, so they're going to be, uh, you know, in balance and the same voltage. It's better for the life of those batteries, and it's just a lot more convenient. Um, you know, I'm so I'm excited about that. It's going to be really nice to be able to just do that and leave the batteries in permanently now. This is what it's all about, if you ask me. You take something that's pretty good and then you make it better for 1929. Yeah, exactly. It's now nothing. Priority direct. I wonder what that means time wise. Now, what's funny is that's only nineteen twenty nine, but it's that's actually a fifth of the price of the entire radio. <laughs> right. It's only a hundred dollar radio. It's crazy how cheap. So it is. seven to fifteen, which is crazy. Yeah. Amazing. So I ordered mine, and I just did the two dollars and forty two cent priority mail direct shipping, like you've got there, and it'll it'll take a week or two or three. So I'll get I it just, when I get it, and then I'll have it done. I just ordered some parts from a company and. The shipping on it, it's like, it won't be here till next week, and it shipped earlier this week, and I just can't do that anymore, man. I mean, I guess you do if you have to. Okay, moving on. Manny wrote me, and he said, Jim, you're the first guy for me to send this information to on the MZ-16. Let me tell you what, Jason. If you tell people something's new and it's not on rcgroups.com, they will fillet your butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I sometimes companies will promote something like it's new, but it's not. So uh, this was obviously definitely new. And Manny is who called me. I think I spelled his name wrong. Manny, I believe that you don't spell your name that way, but I'm going to verify that. And so um, here it is. Now, I tried to include some interesting stuff. So here's a transmitter in general, and it appears to have everything. Uh, accuracy? Con accuracy? Control, stability, fully integrated, and a carbon look. You can also remove these carbon pieces. They have different colors you can put on there. Wow. Um, 16 digital switches that can be assigned and controlled with a single tap from a widget menu. Create as many digital switch combinations as That's you like. That's a lot of switches right there. Uh, the, uh, the design your own screens, program your own control logic, filter your own voice notifications, and even design the look of your radio with removable colored faceplates, as I previously mentioned. And it can store 999 different models, eight flight phases, 12 curve mixers, 
which can be set global or flight phase dependent. This is just a few of the stuff. It's a rock solid hot 2.4 RF system combined with a linear patch antenna for unmatched signal quality. Come on, man. They it's got it all. It really does. I mean, I bet it's expensive, but man, that is one of the most amount of switches I've ever seen on something. That's crazy. Okay, so seven hundred and forty nine dollars. Reason not I, bad as I thought. Jeez. Is that where I, I the link to the right place here? Uh I guess so. So here's all your menus. You can go check that out here. And I didn't put these videos in because they're actually for the MZ32. But I also am wondering if my link is right because it doesn't feel right to me. Uh, I feel like I'm in the video portion of this thing. But let's go. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. I should have gone here. Should link here. Um, but in the description, when you go here, you're actually going to read a whole lot more. I couldn't put all of this in my image descriptions. So there is a lot more information. I love the color dis like display too. It's yeah. just so like modern feeling. Yeah, I'm, I want this to sound right. Um, in this part of the hobby where, you know, we certainly were at a place where every radio was getting better, better, and better. Um, it's great to see Grotner out there creating radios like this. It's, it's like... Um, Grupner always has had great radios, but it feels like they're really pushing the envelope in the transmitter world, and that's great to see in the hobby. Yeah. What's up, Nikolai? He's in the chat. What's up, Nick? Talking weather. You suck. 29 here, says E-Powered RC, Del Cheek, and Nick. Okay, so uh, once again, of course, you can go check that out on rcgroups.com. We'll jump back into the main menu. And any thought here, J Jason? Yeah, I don't really know much about it other than what I wrote. I just I found it and thought it was, hey, pretty cool. People are still doing autopilots. You know, you've got the Eagle Tree stuff. You've got several options, but this is a new controller from, was it My Fly Dream? Um, so yeah, if you need, if you're in the market for a autopilot system, that's definitely one worth checking out. It's got some pretty fantastic features. I had a guy online try to buy my 401 AP off of my thin wing penguin, but he really was going, he was like, I want it, but I don't want to pay a lot. And I was like, well, how much do you want to pay? And then he was like, just very little. <laughs> like, you're not motivating me, man. <laughs> Jeez, I was like, I don't want to pull it out of the airplane for very little. Uh, this is pretty cool. This would be cool in general, maybe. You know, I thought it, I was like, this would be fun to just to drive around for a hobby, hobby use. <laughs> but it's a life saving device. It's probably going to be really expensive, multi thousands of dollars. It's a little, uh, you know, jet driven. Uh, you know, what do they call them? Jet drive driven raft. It's ah! in a Oh, that guy's in trouble. Jet raft to the rescue. But, man, it'll hop some waves. And it's got little thumbsticks. It looks fun, doesn't it? Where's Matt Gun when you need him? <laughs> help me, help me. I'm standing on the ground. I can't wave much longer. Yeah, if I owned a boat, I would own this, unless it was like $8,000. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it's, it's probably going to be for commercial use, but... It's still, it's, it's a radio controlled wow. device. Helps save lives. It'll drive yeah. a human. It's got, it's got enough power to pull a dude around. Yeah, man. Have you ever seen the videos from the eighties of the, the squirrels <laughs> that they taught to uh, water ski, water skiing squirrels? But what? Oh, I have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. This would be great for, if you can get yourself a water skiing squirrel. Thank you so much. Well, it's all the RC radio control. Really safe. For <laughs> you safe. It's like, yeah, pretty cool. That is awesome. Hey, Bill Glover. All right, right. So uh, I swear when I saw this, I thought I did this review. That's I, funny. I didn't. This is the baby version of the F-27, which goes as fast as an F-16 uh, when you're in the goggles. So tell us about this, Jason. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's the F-27. I'm sure people are aware of it by now, but it is the fastest UMX plane that E-Flight does, that's not to say it's crazy fast, because it's not. It's just fast for a micro. Um, but it will get away from you in a hurry and become really, really, really small. So it's a good idea to keep it close. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really simple. I love the rubber nose cone. It's, you know, you can squish it. So it's, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody if you hit them or something. Uh, good color scheme. It's, it tends to be easy to see and it handles well. The launches were really easy. I, the only complaint I had about the airplane was the, the finger holds because it's just such a small airplane. They're like little fingertip grips. It's not like you don't get a good solid, you know, handhold into it. You, you barely got your fingertips on it. It's enough, but it's kind of small and you just throw it with the power off. You got plenty of time. Uh, to get to the throttle and, and crank it up. It's just so light. It glides really well. Um, fits back in the box when you're done. It's all built. Safe mode if you want it. Aerobatic if you want it to be inverted. Just fun horsing around. Little FPV two cell, nose tip? Two cell 300. What, what, did, was there an FPV option on this? No. If, well, I don't think so. Ooh, those servos look small. I guess that's how UMX is on. That's a UMX, man. Boy, I'm really clicking fast today. Little battery fits right in there. Cute, cheap, fun. You know, if you like micros, I, I, I should have took it to the indoor and tried to fly it in the gym. I meant to do that, but I forgot. Next Tuesday. So this uh, went live this week, so you can go yep. check that out. Yep, yep. Very nice, very nice. And we have other reviews to check out in this podcast. Uh, big news, ZB uh, came on board with a bigger ad, which makes me happy. He's a guy who sells ads on rcgroups.com. And at the very same moment, in fact, I guarantee he didn't buy that ad for no good reason. I guarantee that he has new stuff that he's uh, launching slash going to launch. Nice. And that's probably why I went there. I, this was the same day that he, he called me up and we, we worked our deal on, on the advertising. And so this is the uh, it's free brushless mother's elite HD outrunner, and there is debate on his what is this? So there's three. First, let's talk about the, the motors themselves. Well, there's more than three actually, I believe. So what I did is I included the name, the photo, and the specs. So there's a 30 cc, a 35 cc, a 40 cc, and a 50 cc. And even Jason, yes, that's right. We didn't stop at 50. We went all the way to 60 cc motor. Boom. Big boys. And then, of course, if you post motors, you're going to have motor experts. And so the KV rating is the big debate here is if these KV ratings are actually real. And I've been following this because I'm interested to see what they come up with. Charts, diagrams, they've got it all at rsecrets.com, these, these uh, hardcore users. Uh, Ron Van Summeren's jumped in to the fray. Jason, you know how I'm playing it. <laughs> Ron is definitely, uh, it's like certain people in the hobby have certain things and that's all that they love. And Ron is always in on the thread like this. Nice. So anyway, go check it out. Uh, and then go visit the website, uh, you know, just out of curiosity as I rapidly scroll really moving fast. Uh, let's go see some pricing. So 225 for the 30 and then all the way up to the 63.59, which if you were to price out a motor of that size, you know, you're living in the same price world, I believe. So we talked a lot about this. There's no reason to talk too much about it today, but the uh, Inductrix FPV uh, BL is out. And I got to say, I still love this thing. And I still think if you're looking for a hardy, FPV unit indoors and uh, for like if there's no wind outside outdoors, this is definitely not a bad way to go. I, that doesn't even sound right. This is a great way to go and put it that way. Well, you woke up and saw your shadow this morning, so it's still going to be indoor drone season for quite a while. Wait, is that today? No, but you, I mean, yeah, yeah, it could be. Do we know anything's real? P.S. One thing Jason Cole taught me. Um. I was running, right, is anything real? Uh, I heard that there's a high probability that this whole world is a simulation. On a computer. <laughs> so just FYI. Yeah. Um, the, I was running uh, my circular antenna on my goggles. And of course, this is not. And Jason, was it you telling me that once you went to back to your rubber ducky, you were getting yeah, a lot better? Yeah, linear. Yep. You're getting better penetration and better uh, just video yep. and all. You get well, more multi-pathing, but you better signal quality because it's just the signals are 
right for each other. It's like they're made for each other. They are made. They're yeah. on the same yeah. wavelength. Right. That's right. That's right. So uh, I got to say, if, you, if you're into this, and in any of these smaller uh, Horizon units, this is not an expensive charger. And you literally, I just put them on and let them cook and come back. And I have all my batteries ready to rock. I use this on multiple transmitters. It didn't care. In fact, I would use it on one and switch it the other and switch it back. It has a uh, OSD, which is great. And Jason and I both know that in the olden days that you just didn't get that so easy. Nope. And then just in case you're <clears throat> following along at home, I did put oops.com upside down in this photo. So it actually, the RCG is correct, but the broken uh, part is uh, I was like, I can't even read that. <laughs> it's That's a mind bender. <laughs> All right. So let me go back up top just for a little checky check. Yep. Okay. You know what? Excellent. Yeah, it's already been marked. And the Gropnar, he also had this coming out. Uh, by the way, Manny asked if we're going to be at Toledo, and if so, he wants to buy us both a drink at the bar. Well, there you go. I told him that we had submitted our request here. and we'll know uh, in the future. So these are four and one ESC's GPSA one modules. I've got to say, I'm not that guy. I have been that guy. I have built these, but uh, Jason, are you that guy? Are you the guy that will do this? Wait a minute. Is this for something you put in the drone ball? Well, let's just drone ball sweeper GPS right there. Is this something you could add to our drones to enable GPS like loiter kind of stuff? Looks like it, man. Looks like it. Mm, hot so scroll radio. Down, scroll down. Scroll down. Right there. Nope, that picture. In the middle of that picture, it says yeah, drone yeah. ball sweeper GPS. That looks exactly like the drone ball uh, thing, you, you know, like a modified version of it without the cage and all that. You can add autopilot functions as waypoint flying, coming home using your iPhone or Android for flight planning. I don't know why you would want that on the sweeper. We need to bring our drone balls to Joe Nall okay. and do, do something crazy together. Well, at the very least, we can. where can we fly that? Maybe uh, on the electric line at the end there. We can bounce around a little bit. I say we like fly it into each other at the demos or something. We do a drone ball oh. demolition demo. I don't know. Show. You know what? I'm already saying no because unannounced. Like we just show up and do it. When you and I flew those by ourselves, no one was there. It was hilarious. Yeah. But then when everybody had their airplanes on the flight line, and then my drone ball was bouncing around, I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> this is not." You know, you got to be careful. We get Kike like hovering his jet for his demo, and then we just take him out and fly like right around. We do like circles around his jet. Yes. I I think it'll work. I may have mentioned this. Uh, this is such a great photo, man. Uh, I did crop it to fit, but it's awesome. Uh, Chris Henson, Team Extreme. Welcome, Santiago Perez. So uh, there's some information here. I went out on the internet and looked for some stuff on him as well. So welcome to Team Extreme. Chris Congrats, Henson. Buddy. Congrats. I remember when Chris just got into the industry. Well, he'd been in the industry before me, of course, working for uh, – Bubba Spivey, you don't know what it is, but when you do, you will. And uh, then went out on his own. But that happened about the same time that I started working at Hobby Lobby. So uh, I'm over here reading the live chat real quick. Now, this is hot potatoes. In fact, I want to talk about something. How would I show you this? Um, Jason, why don't you talk about this? And then I'm going to go hunt for something real quick. Uh-oh, he's going to hunt. So I get to talk about something? Well, you did the story. With my nasally voices, well, I can't scroll. I can't scroll your your computer. Well, you just talk about that. Do you want me to scroll? Hey, you're fine. This is okay. So this is like beginner, uh, you know, kids or newbies to racing or driving. Uh, it's the fired up. It's the axe two wheel drive. It's a based on a monster truck. It's the ECX brand. It's only available in hobby stores. You can't buy this online at Horizon Hobbies website you have to go to a hobby shop it's brushed motor two-wheel drive just supposed to be you know really affordable and still a lot of fun i think it looks pretty cool i, I like the axe kind of license color scheme and and all the uh, fire ladders and all that stuff hanging on there that's pretty cool it is cool so speaking of that um 
as you may or may not know, P.S. Everyone, this is RC related and it's pretty damn cool. Uh, oh. Jason, I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I saw that. I know you, exactly what you're gonna say. Okay, and so I I too, but I don't, I don't have the thing. Well, I, I, I gotten bored with the online version because they haven't had any updates in a long time, and I thought, yeah. okay, I need to see what's happening on GTA 5, which was my very first video game that I decided to get addicted to. And uh, I saw a couple of things, and so I went in, logged in, and used my money. Let me pull the screen over here. I have not watched this video, but uh, I'm sure it's going Wait to. Wait a minute. I might have GTA on my Xbox. Okay, so in GTA 5, yeah. they were, and I, Jason, I'm thinking about doing a story about this. I just got it yesterday evening, and so that's why yeah. nothing's alive. They put I was excited when I first saw this, by the way. I was like, yeah, cool. Somebody made an RC like truck game. And then I was like, oh, it's in GTA 5. Of course it is. Well, and hopefully this video shows it. So this truck, whoever built it, I own it now and I have driven it around. <laughs> uh, the bandito. Who it cost a million dollars in game, right? Holy crap. But uh whoever built it and knew... you can like, strap bombs to it and drive them around and blow up cars and stuff. Okay, what is this guy doing? Sorry. Okay, here we go. <laughs> what? Okay, so this is a warehouse, and uh, I don't know why he's taking us all over here, but um, you go in your warehouse, and you have a workshop, and when you order it, your truck shows up on your workbench, <laughs> which was the first. I'm like, where is the truck, though? And so it's on your little uh, snap-on tool workbench, yep. and then you can go in there, and you can you can add these. Uh, I put an EMF on it, so if you uh, set it off by car, it makes all the cars stop what? operating, their computers stop okay. operating. But you can put wings, you can change uh, the graphics, you can put bodies on it. And this is when I realized that I could make it look like the body on my new truck. So oh, we'll nice. see when this shows up. Now, here's the same burrito bandito. I couldn't change that on my. Yeah. Uh, there's the EMP. And then it has different liveries. Now, is there actually like racing in the game? Race yeah, courses? so they're, they're right now, and they, he may show this. They have a course where you race against other guys in these RC cars, and uh, you win in-game money. Now, is it a third-person race where you're like actually standing there watching it drive around, or are you in the truck, like FPV style? It is not third-person. It is uh, behind the vehicle. Okay. So it, you can make the trunk jump. Uh, you can alter your wheels and tires, which, by the way, the wheels on my new truck are the wheels that I used to pick. They're called Dukes on uh, GTA Five. Yeah. So I actually could pick the wheels on my actual physical driving around truck That's in the game. And then I picked the same body style, the same color, tinted the windows. It was, yeah, he's an off-road wheel, so he's not going to get to mine. So um, then you can also change the driver's helmets and their clothing. And so it's pretty ridiculous. You walk outside. That tells you something about how cool RC trucks are, if they're that popular that they would actually use it in a game, right? Right. That, well, that kind of game. While it's in this black screen, I'm not sure what the heck's going on here. Um, so wait, let me, let me go back on how you get right it. So there. you go to you go outside oh. and then you go to a menu and you call up your bandito. Request bandito. And then it pops up, and now you're in this. Uh, view like you once talked about where we put a camera behind an airplane. Yeah. And then you can drive it around anywhere you want. You can set your bomb off. And then let's see if he does racing. So let me pause. Well, while this, so here's my theory, Jason. This is what my story would be on. It would be about how this is cool and a little video on th what we just looked at. But also that stuff like this is how you get people excited about RC. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah, Cause yeah exactly. Because you'd be like, oh, man, I won't, now I need to go get a real truck and drive it around, right? Right. So if if lots of kids are now online instead of out at RC fields, perhaps the inclusion of an RC truck would uh, – they also – P.S. I don't. I could do this as another story. They have a drone now in, a, in this uh, unit that you buy. And you go in the back of a trailer, and then you fly your drone from the, from the truck. So in a sense, now we can combat the – sensitization of violence and get to get all these kids involved in RC trucks and cars now. Yeah. 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 Well, it's come I full like circle, it. right? Let's see <laughs> if he does the game. And if he doesn't, I'll jump out of here. Well, there's also a track and it's an off-road track just for these vehicles. 
and um, you can go and compete against other Bandito drivers. So, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. GTA Banditos. Let me hit pause on that video. Uh, very awesome. And then I'm going to go back. Now, everyone, uh, we still have the majority of our live viewers hanging out. Don't leave. Jason has a Timberex purchased with his own money. The dog's barking. I could look at, I'm, I just switched mental gears. I could look at my uh, doorbell <laughs> and see who's at the front door. Right. But Jason's going to bring the Timberex out, talk about the build, talk about flying it this morning. So we're going to wrap up with that. We are 36 minutes in. We have a few more news stories to talk about. Uh, we, I think we already talked about this elderly drone man. Oh yeah. There is someone at my front door. Oh. Okay. Jason, talk, talk about, talk about RC for a second. Talk about RC for a second. Go check out the, uh, guy at the house. All right, folks. It's just me and you. Let's have a nice little chat here. Now Jason's on the spot. There is someone at the back door. Oh. Hello. This is all. Awesome. This is live, like intruder. This is like I swatted Jim. I did. I I called the police, and then the SWAT team is showing up at Jim's house live on the podcast. Okay, maybe someone else is talking. Actually, to I didn't do that because I don't want to go to jail. Yes. Okay, Jason. Uh, while I get rid of technology, I believe it is time to talk about the Timber X. So the Timber I'm gonna, X. I'm going to cut to you and and lock right. it on your head. I got some thoughts for sure. So Timber X, it is physically here. Told the story about how I got it. They had it at the store. I was like, okay, I just got to buy it. Um, glad I did after two flights. I'll you know get into that later. But let me just talk about it a little bit. Um, the wing is just two screws. Comes right off. Uh, there's a bunch of wires for all of the servos and lights and everything. So we got lights on top. We got uh forward lights we've got tip lights bottom lights all kinds of cool stuff there um let's see okay first thing i'll talk about is the fact that it can have the floats so i gotta buy the float set uh for this uh springtime because i'm going to be selling my old sport cub with floats and this is going to replace that but uh, in the tail, when you're installing the tail, they give you two tail rods. You get this nice carbon fiber black one, and then you get a much heavier uh, silver steel one. And David Payne told me to use the heavy one, and I, I understand why. And it's pretty obvious is the lighter one is going to move the CG forward for more docile flying, for newer pilots, where if you put the heavier one in, it moves the CG back and allows you to have more 3d capabilities you know more aerobatic just a more rearward cg which is pretty cool so i like the color scheme i like the green and black and white that looks good the landing gear sprung um you know, sprung. sprung now i really like these tires these wheels there's they're firm but squishy and they're giant and they're gonna I, roll over everything i heard that's what they use in breast implants this this could be uh, that's just a rumor. I've never actually felt that, so I, I don't really know. But it, this feels nice. So, I mean, I'll say that. <laughs> okay, enough, enough about the wheel. <laughs> All right. Um, here's the thing. So I got to fly today. The wheels don't and landing gear don't do awesome on paved runways. It was, uh -huh. It's bouncy. You can get it in nice, you know, whatever. You can do a nice greaser landing with it, but it's more bouncy uh, than other wheels. These are amazing in the grass. Really beautiful super short landings and super quick takeoffs in the grass lots and lots of fun we've got lots of throw um so did you do anything tricky with those flaps like full yeah flap so there's two ways you can set this up with the stock bind and fly receiver there's only six channels available so you can't split out four individual channels on the wing so what ends up happening is in the manual there's a basic setup where it Y harnesses the ailerons to one channel and the flaps to one channel and they're separated. You use flaps like flaps, ailerons like ailerons. Keep them separated. Then there's a more advanced uh, program set up in the, in the manual and you end up Y harnessing the ailerons, but then you have the two flaps on separate channels. And then that allows you to mix uh, the flaps with the ailerons. So I can do full span ailerons 
Did you do that? Really increases. I did this. Yeah, it really increases the roll rate. Yeah, uh, makes it. You know, you can do nice rolling harriers, real fast rolls, all kinds of stuff. Spin. Did you do any crow with it? Uh, you cannot do crow unless you had a seven-channel receiver, because um, mm. right now your airlines are Y harnessed. Mm. So you'd have to replace that AS3X safe receiver with your own that's got more channels available for you. Let to me use. let me just say this to everyone: I was always trying to put crow on everything I owned in the early days. It really isn't that useful in an airplane like this. It's kind of fun. I will say, I mean, you can see how much. That's a lot of daggum flap travel. A barn door. And did you land it like that? Will yeah, it do- I did land it like that. It comes down. I can. It's fun. It's so fun. I really had a good time. I only flew two batteries, but I had really fun. So if I put full flaps in, you just sit on the runway and you blast the throttle. It just it's goes gonna, up. It just, it just kind of lifts. It doesn't really roll. It just kind of lifts. And but then it continues with the. Uh, you know, it will do a loop if you didn't touch anything else. So I would blast off and then hold down elevator to kind of pull back at an angle. And then I'd go up a little bit and then I'd pull it back and then come down with the flap still deployed. And it would just like float all the way down and then to a nice short takeoff landing. Um, How much was it Jason? Two something? 250. 250. 250. Lots of power. I'm running the 4S 2200. So it'll also run on 3S. You can run up to a 3200 milliamp hour size battery if you want for really long flight times. 4S 2200, lots of full throttle climbs and blasts and hovering and things. And and uh, about I got five minutes before my battery was done. Um, so five minute flight timer for all the horsing around you want to do. You can get more with bigger batteries. Um, but 4S power is really really nice. Hovering was like half throttle plenty of authority, plenty of control throw hovers really great. Rolling Harrier's great. Blenders are awesome. Uh, inverted flight was fun. Um, it kind of did it all slips. The rudder is crazy effective. So I may have to dial the rudder back some because it was like trying to do a slip. I would over like not very much deflection. I would over steer with the rudder and uh, try to do knife edge, I would always input too much until you get used to it. It takes a few flights to get used to it. Um, but extremely effective rudder. Now, a couple of the gripes. I don't really have a lot of gripes. The only thing I don't love is the battery hatches on the bottom, which is, it's you know, I hate having to put my plane upside down and sting it up the tail. And the yeah, you almost, the you almost need like a rack to go yeah. with. I actually, dude, I should have brought that. It's in my closet. I've got that cruising uh, flight stand. That is coming with me from now on to the yeah, field. Yeah, you can just like strap it on there, and that's how you take Heck, it. Over. Yeah, that is bomber. I'm glad I got that. So that's the battery hatch, and I just, I don't know. I feel like this day and age, we should have better technology for installing and securing our batteries. So there's just two Velcro straps. And, you know, they're always a pain in the butt to, like, not get them attached to each other while you're trying to get the battery in and all that stuff. There should be a better way. Like a just, like a pocket, and it you you put it in, and it locks it. Yeah, no, I, I get that batteries are different sizes and whatever, but there's just, I don't know, having to put it upside down and then fiddle with that, it just makes battery changes, like, not, you know, enjoyable. I want to be able to just go, boop, 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 done, let's go fly, because you just want to keep flying. But other than that, I put an XT60 on it because all my packs have XT60s. Um, lots of power, very aerobatic. I mean, it's it's what I wanted it to be. It's going to replace my Sport Cub. It's a lot of fun. It looks good. You can fly slow. You can do the flap thing. You can do aerobatics. You can do 3D if you want. Um, you know, and the floats are going to be a blast. So it's very versatile. So I'm super pumped. I like it a lot. I think it's definitely worth the 250 um, just for what you get, all the lights, all the electronics, you know, the wheels, the sprung laning gear. I think they did a really good job. Just a, you know, battery thing could have been better. But that's it. So two thumbs up. I mean, this is very early on, only two flights. haven't really spent a whole lot of time with it. But I think they put a lot of thought into it. I like the dual rods for the tail section. So you know, depending on who's buying it, it can work for just about anybody out there. So green is the only color. Yep. 
Only color unless you take it off and put something else on. Yeah. There's, no, there's no decals, so you got to paint or do something else. That's what I was thinking. If I bought one, I would probably get the right paint and then mask it. and then, Or maybe I don't know if I'd mask it or not, but then go red. Otherwise, we'd have two of these in the air that uh, yeah. you'd be able to tell whose was whose by how well the other person was playing. No, no that's not true. <laughs> uh, uh, now, I'm looking. Oh, okay, this light wires. I was like, there's some wires inside. I'm looking, they've got this giant cooling hole uh, where the rear float mount was going to be. And they, like, they look like some threaded wires in there, but it's. I think it's going to light modules. And this dude does have lights on it, right? Can you? Show us the lights. Definitely have lights. Yeah, I mean, grab a battery. Don't chop your juggler. How about three? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, we'll see how easy or hard it is. So I programmed a throttle cut because I'm using my head a lot of the times. Uh, okay, so there's your landing lights. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Nice. Front lights. We've got the cool. strobe on top. Boom, boom, boom. You've got green. It's not showing. Kind of showing right. green and red. And you didn't put the slats on. I did not put the slats on. Don't put the slats on yours Why unless not? you like not flying inverted. They don't fly well with the slats on inverted and aerobatically. It's more for just like super, super, super slow flying. You heard it here first, uh, folks. Yeah. So just leave them off. You notice they don't use them in the video for Horizon because they're horsing Ooh. around. Right. So, here it goes. All right. So let me show you the flaps. I'm going to let the battery dangle. Jingle, dangle. All right. That's, that's a male plane. So there's, you know, neutral. That's landing flaps and landing flaps. I mean, it's just barn door, ginormous. And then I've got where the flaps and ailerons work together. And now I'm in high rate. So you can see a lot. Lots of throw. ton of rudder. Maybe you could uh, couple those ailerons with your elevator, and then you can like get crazy. Now if I could install the battery, I could hover it right here. Right? Don't let go. Nine one one. Nine one one. Install the battery. Do it. Uh, that would be an awesome. I could hover shot. it from my bedroom. Yeah. Uh, maybe after I get a few more flights in it, I can. Well, do that. Come on. <laughs> Damn it. That's I don't want to lose it. And I got earbuds in, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, safety first. It wouldn't be well. It might make some for good entertainment, but hey, I want it to fly again. So anyway, I, you know, two thumbs up. It's not perfect, but, you know, rarely planes are. So it's good. It's really good. I'm loving it. So, And, happy, and happy, of course, happy. maybe this is the FPV plane of, of everyone's dreams. Yeah, I mean, you know, the regular timber might be better. This one's this one's more for horsing around. Yeah. It'll do the slow flying and the, the lazy stuff and touch and goes and all that stuff. You know, this is more for you want to horse around aerobatics, 3D. Just I love that it can do all of that. So they got a. This would be a great uh, pro bro plane, I think. Oh, oh yeah, that great I'm sure we'll see some there. Listen, Jason, if you don't go to Fall in the Nall, you definitely have to go to Nashville this year. By the way, PS, yeah. I don't know if I can announce this, and I haven't even told the Pro Bros, so I, I'm not going to announce what I uh, – a sponsor has contacted me about the event. They want to sponsor the event, and I wrote an email. Let's see if they've replied to say, can I talk about this? So one second. Uh, Littlefoot. Steve Steve asked if somebody could say that, so I, I said it. Littlefoot. Littlefoot. Extreme flight. Aubrey. Okay, okay I'm looking, well, everyone. Yeah. I cannot talk about this yet. Okay. Peter, you cannot turn off the AS3X unless you change receivers, but you can uh, do safe mode. You can put safe mode on a switch and activate or deactivate that, but AS3X stability stuff will always be there in all modes. But if you, I've got to think that you haven't used AS3X because if you had, you would never want to turn it off. I mean, Jason, you don't feel the need to turn AS3X off. Well, uh, AS3X is always there and it's good. It's just a right. stable, it's just to keep the turbulence and things from buffeting the plane so much. But safe mode is the thing where it limits the bank angles and, and uh, auto levels, which you don't really want. Safe mode always messes me up. Yeah. If I don't know I'm in it and then I, I yank, but it don't bank. It's always a mental. I'm like, oh. Ah. Yep. I hear you. 
All right. Well, listen, next week we're going to talk about an indoor course that Jason put together uh, while his wife left town. <laughs> and Jason was like, I think what I'll do is turn the whole living room into an FPV uh, That's right. course. That's right. Got to stay entertained, man. So uh, Peter Picola says, I purchased a wing and have crashed the Icon A5. Should I use those components on my wing? Hmm. Yeah, why not? If they fit and work, yeah. Heck yeah. And I, and uh, E-Powered says AS3X helps make flame fly bigger than they really are. And that I will 100% attest to on that little pits that we just recently reviewed re or is in review right now. And uh, it definitely flew like a big plane. And it would never fly that way with it, without AS3X. You know? It's true. So true story. Good. True story. Long range FPV wing. Yeah, man. Good stuff. Well, if anyone's looking for a Finwing Penguin with a 41 AP pre-installed, it's just hanging in my basement, and I would love for someone to uh, make me an offer and come get it because I want the space, and someone should have it. It's it's perfect. Yeah, Peter, I'd definitely say get a flight controller that's capable, has GPS, airspeed, um, so in case the video breaks up or goes out or anything, you can have it return to home automatically. Uh, you know, the, the 41 AP is a good one. I've got the 41 AP light, which works great. Eagle tree vector. is really nice. Um, there's, there's a few really good flight controllers out there, but I'd say go for that for sure. Um, there's lots of video options out there, but I think for me probably be like 1.3 gigahertz uh, is what I would choose for long range. It's and penetrating of obstacles and things it's going to work really well but i mean there's there's a whole lot that goes into it and it all has to work together so maybe something more for a uh, one of the threads on rc groups uh with some information there's lots of people out there doing long range setups and so you can kind of review what they've used and and you know see their experiences and what what's worked and what hasn't so it's going to be really helpful for you check out that fpv section on rc groups and if you're not watching this live and you would like to watch it live and ask questions, you can hit the, uh, the, uh, where's the button at hit the button to, uh, subscribe to us. And then you can also hit the bell. I believe it's the bell button to alert you to things like this. And then you can get on there and talk to us. Also, another way to go is you can always PM Jason or I before a podcast, like, you know, the coming week before, and we would be happy to discuss prior to the podcast and then have uh, a little discussion on the podcast about whatever your question might be, if we have an answer for it. Jason, what's your plans for the weekend? That is a great question. I know uh, I'm probably going to do some flying Saturday because guess what? 60 degrees, light wind, sunny. I'm going flying. That's for dang sure. I can are you going to do it at the field? I'm probably going to stay local. I know right. we have a uh, gender reveal party for some of our friends at, at like in the afternoon on Saturday. So I'm probably going to is stick that, around. Is that a millennial thing? Uh, I guess they're like in their 20s. Yeah, so they're, they, they're, they're not, not sure, sure yet. They, they know the gender, but they want to reveal it to all their friends. So I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. We'll show up. That sounded it's, a little it's racy. About about I'm sure it's about getting gifts. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm probably going to be working on the truck somewhere or the other. I did order some things for it, so uh, I'll be doing that. Well, everyone, I want to thank you for joining the RC Groups podcast slash hangout on rcgroups.com. Go to the site. Don't forget that we run flyinggiants.com for giant scale stuff and helifreak.com, which, by the way, is almost as big as Flying Giants. And, and both those sites singularly are bigger than all other RC forums other than RC groups. Did you know that, Jason? You're stuck on me, so I'm just making weird faces oh, now. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> we do that all the time. You, live chat's supposed to tell us when we're stuck on people. Oh, no, I'm presenting. Okay. No, I'm not presenting. Is it off? I don't know. There we go. <laughs> But anyway, you guys know the word. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us. Just join us next week. Hit the like button because it makes more people see the video. And we're trying to get the uh, RC pumped up, pumping up. Oh, uh, okay. I, RC. I, I, I was in my truck showing it to a guy at the field last week, Jason. Uh -huh. Took him for a ride. And when he got out, you know what he said to me? What did he say? I'm going to say it, then I'm going to stop the broadcast. Uh -oh. He goes, this is a great truck. I'm glad all your dreams have come true. Now simmer down now. <laughs>
All right, y'all. Simmer down now. Bye. Peace out.